if you have kids, mm-hmm. you still have to pick your kids up at school now. Yep. What are you going to do, like managing that and your appointments in between, um, you know, meetings at all sorts of hours. So the mm. compartmentalization of your life to say, mm. actually, if I have a meeting in the US, I'm not meeting at eight o'clock at night. I need mm. to create that boundaries. Mm. Mm. And often in business, when you are an entrepreneur, you don't know how to create those boundaries. Mm. And if you're running a business, it's the same. Mm. And that's where the big fears around burnout come mm. out. And often your best guys, I think Pumi, we've had this discussion before, mm. are the ones that are most likely to burn out because they, mm. the ones who do the best work, but they also don't know when to stop. Yeah. Mm. No, it's huge. Mm. Yeah. Please. I often find also that that another another thing that people, you know, overlook a lot of the time is, you know, trying to be as efficient as possible with, with their activities. Yep. And I know at the, in an office environment, it, it's easy because then people, you know, you can make the distinction between, all right, when I'm at home, home is home and the office is the office. So people tend to, to apply much, much more structure to their, to their office work, their office environment. And mm-hmm. I think what, what the lockdown has done is that it's now, because now the home has become the office, that's also probably been part of the, of the challenge of adapting that now they now need to create a structure in an environment that previously they didn't really need to have a structure. And, uh, and, and also now vice versa with going back to the office. Mm. So I think the, you know, coming up with, a, with, a, with a, an approach where you find ways of, of utilizing your energy as, as efficiently as possible, I mm. think is a good way to help you to, to know what kind of structure would work best. Because of mm. course you can't use the same structure that you would use the office in the home environment if you're working from home. So there need to be there need to be some some adjustments that are made there. Mm. And I think that's probably also part of the of the challenge that a lot of people have experienced with this juggling between working from home and mm. being back in the office. Mm. But again, strangely enough for me, I have loved working from home. Um, I felt way more productive, incredibly efficient in terms of just how I utilize my time. Mm. Um, and also just because, again, I have a relatively big team and, and, and I'm very open. So there's always, you know, like chats and, you know, via five minutes and all those kind of things. But here, you know, I could literally just focus um, and I found it really liberating. Yeah. Mm. I, I, I think some of the things I've come to realize is that um, people have become extremely too busy. They have too many webinars, too many things happening. And okay. uh, unless you which one are your priorities mm. you can find yourself the whole day just attending to work yes so it's it's also become extremely extremely busy out there so at some point you've got to really with that adjustment decide what's really important for you um, to create value otherwise you will just be moving from one platform to the next and really never be effective in any way it's become mm. busy bodies okay all of a sudden, even in our comfort zone. Mm. I'm glad you say that, Grace, because I, I, I'm guilty of that. <laughs> on, on Monday, I was in the President's Investment Conference. I was in a meeting and I was watching a, tr- a masterclass tutorial all at the same time. That sounds like... That sounds like multitasking with a capital M. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I also find I'm actually reading boundaries, boundaries. Not boundaries. Because mm-hmm. I'm finding that setting my own boundaries has become important because what I began doing was thinking, like, I won't exercise now. I'll do a bit of work and then I'll exercise and then I'll, I, I kind of mm-hmm. lost my whole flow of my day. And I've had to be very strict to myself to set boundaries. So even if I am working at home to know that prior to work, I will exercise before I sit at my desk. And it's often, I find it very difficult disciplining myself Um, Mm. because it's much easier to sit and think, I'll get the admin done, but then suddenly it's four in the afternoon and you're still Mm. at your desk, you know? So I think boundaries, our own boundaries and possibly sash our own new normals. You know, it's not a general new normal, Mm. We're all in different situations. So maybe what yep. we need to do is actually 
ensure that we find our own normals and mm. get it together sooner than later. Not true. Uh, Theo, yeah, sure. do you think we can, we, we can start? Helpful. We've just been doing our own little intro here, <laughs> but perhaps it sets a good tone. Yep. Yes, no, that's fine. I, I'm, I'm sure that there are some people, the participants that have joined us now for this webinar. And I think we, we can, we can get, get started. So, all right, great. Um, before I get into the official welcoming, just to quickly run through all of us that are on the panel for the benefit of those who have joined us on this webinar. So my name is Theodore, and we are joined by Trish Taylor from Life Retreat, as well as Sasha Miller, who is the convener of the Progressive Business Forum. And then of course, our two incredible guest speakers this afternoon, Melelo Zondi and Grace Mumo. And behind the scenes, Helping us with the technical side of things is Seth, also from the PBF. So that's the, the team that we have this, this afternoon. It's an incredible team, and I'm sure that we will all learn something of incredible value on the webinar this afternoon. Thank you, Theo. Great. So how do we, as business owners, executives, entrepreneurs, startups, turn crisis into opportunity? How do we find opportunities and solutions in the chaos that has been wrought by the COVID-19 pandemic? How do we take the lead in providing hope and inspiration to a society battling to adapt to the so-called new normal? The answer to that question is what we will be exploring in this afternoon's webinar, and that is by thinking outside of the box. It gives me great pleasure to welcome all of you this afternoon to this value-packed, power-packed, inspiration-packed webinar with the theme, Thinking Outside the Box. It's the latest webinar in our business resilience masterclass webinar series. And I'm sure and positive that all of you who have decided to join us this afternoon will find a lot of value in what we will be hearing on the webinar. So we've got a, an incredible webinar for you today with our two incredible guest speakers who we will introduce in a little bit more detail later on. So I'll ask you to relax, to clear all of the distractions and to feel free to engage and participate fully in our webinar this afternoon. So you will also be able to interact and engage with us in the chat box. If you would like some more information or contact details about anyone on the panel or our guest speakers, that information will be provided by mm -hmm. Seth in the chat box. So please feel free to go into the chat box. Also, if you have any comments or questions that you'd like to pose, then also feel free to raise those in the chat box as well. So just to introduce myself before we get started, my name is Theodore Pietras. I'm a business coach and I specialize in working with small business executives, business owners and entrepreneurs. And I basically help them to grow their business in 12 months using a five-step business breakthrough system. And I'd like to take this opportunity to for you that have decided to join us on this webinar to invite you to join me for a free Grow Your Business Fast coaching session where we'll work together to get clear in your vision and direction for your business, help you to uncover hidden challenges that may be sabotaging your sales and marketing efforts, and help you to leave the session renewed, re-energized, and inspired to take your business to the next level of profitability. So please feel free to make contact with me in the chat box. My contact details will be provided. And if you would like to take advantage of this invitation. So co-hosting with me is the lovely Sasha Miller from the Progressive Business Forum and also the equally lovely Trish Taylor from Life Retreat. So I will now hand over to these two lovely ladies to introduce themselves and to tell us a little bit more about what they do in their respective roles. Over to you, Sasha. 
Thank you very much, Theo. Um, attendees, friends, business colleagues, welcome today. Um, this masterclass really was a concept that um, Trish Taylor and I had discussed um, quite a while back. And in fact, it started with me looking at the PBF, even though it's a program of the ANC, which is responsible for the relationship with business, uh, parliament and um, the ANC, business leaders, and being able to make sure there's a social compact between. We found that in our business unit, because we've been around for 15 years now, and I took over last year, middle of last year, as far as the convener. So a convener in the political sense is very much like a CEO. You run a unit like a CEO. And I found I came into a team that had been there for a very long time. And a lot of people were stuck in the way they were doing things. Things worked in that process. We, our, we had our job, we had a nice little tick box. And every year we would say, we did these events. We had these ministerial engagements. We did these presidential events, we made sure that these ministers engaged with these businesses and tick, tick, tick. Did we know how this all came back? No. And I think we were all a bit stuck too. And if you ask my team, they'll probably admit to it now. And um, we met with Trish and she said, well, let us come in and run a workshop. And I can't actually remember what we called the workshop. I think it was a mindfulness workshop. You're on mute. <laughs> Mindfulness in the workplace. Yes. Yeah. And I can tell you that 90%, maybe 99%, bar maybe myself and one other person in the team, and, we're, and we've got a good few in our team, had never under, knew what mindfulness was before that day. And at the end of our one and a half day workshop, I had a team that were ready and changed and open. And I think I'm saying this now because that was the beginning process of the mind of this masterclass where we said, well, we need to help others with this. But that was also the only the starting point for the transformation for the PBF. So sure, we had something that worked, but how do you actually make something that truly adds valuable? That is not just tick box, but something that's world-class that we can all truly be proud of. Proud of. So actually my, my bit that I want to add today is about how we use technology as the enabler to do that. And technology is a bit of a scary term, especially if you've been around in business for a long time or it's your 10th time around. Many entrepreneurs don't get it right the first time. They always try and try again, which is a great uh, skill to have. But in finding that we need to find a process, a system that makes one, the staff's life easier, so the team's life easier, but at the same time, they're not ready for the change. So now you're telling me that a new system is going to make my life easy. How is it going to make my life easy? Uh, I need to now learn a whole new thing. I need to input everything. And how do I do it? And that's a change of mindset. So often what you need to do is you need to change the mindset by changing the look. Seth, I don't know if you can pull up my presentation for today. And I don't, want to, I don't believe in death by PowerPoint. So please don't uh, for any minute think that this is going to be a huge presentation. Um, we'll go to the second slide. I need to go a bit back, please, Seth, if you can. A bit more. Yep, yeah, second slide. <laughs> so um, this is what I just explained to you what the PBF is. Um, obviously, we have a lot of subscribers joining us today and they've been with us. Many of our subscribers have been with us for many years. Um, the PBF, if you're not part of the PBF, it's an annual subscription-based program for private businesses. We have different tier benefits from a small to an enterprise. And uh, really what we do is we provide the service to businesses to engage 
within the democratic process through the leading party of South Africa, which is the African National Congress, being able to engage and talk about business policy, talk about the problems in business. How do we change things around? How do we make a better South Africa without being able to understand where things are wrong? And I give you an example of some of the things we've done. Um, there's been changes in policy and visa immigration for big business. And often big business want general managers in place who want to be able to measure and make sure that their investment, that there's a sound investment in South Africa. So just coming from the president's investment conference, you have all this money coming in. And hopefully we'll have a lot more now so that we can get the economic stimulus going. But we, but people giving money don't just give money for Mahala. They want to know that they're going to get a return. And so they also want to have be able to have the right people there. And there were some changes in the regulation around critical skills visa that made it very difficult for businesses to send these people. We then created a roundtable discussion with our subscriber base, with the various business associations, and discussed directly with the minister what the issues were and his team. So it was also the officials. What they didn't realize is that they were getting this as a myriad from all different avenues. But what we provided them was in a singular place this is the view of the problems that people are having. Actually, it's not the policy, it's the problem. It's not the regulation that's the problem. It's the understanding thereof. And a new training program happened and um, we managed to make the necessary changes to make a difference. And this is just like about one of the few things we've been doing. The other thing we do is a PCF, which is a, a progressive citizen. So for professionals, uh, we all understand, and in South Africa, everyone's very interested in the political process. But as an individual, if I don't want to be a politician, how do I get involved? I want to provide my service as an expert, but I don't want to run for town councillor, mayor, <laughs> or get involved in that. Through the PCF program, you can do that. You can offer your services, you can offer your expertise, and you can also give insight and advice. What that does is through study groups, you, the ANC leaders and the ANC study groups hear your input and it helps contribute towards our policy making and the implementation of the processes. Those processes ultimately help the government processes in implementing a better system for all of us. And we, the other thing the PBF manages is ANC merchandising. So if you see someone wearing an ANC t-shirt, it's not the ANC creating it. These are individuals, small business people, small merchandisers, and really right down to the grassroots. We can proudly say that it's proudly South African only. So from this year, we signed a partnership with Proudly South Africa. Only South African businesses making these products in South Africa can resell ANC products. It's something for us very, to, very much to be proud of. And that also shows our commitment in making sure that we stimulate the rag trade within South Africa. And then the PBF also does all the major fundraising, dinners and presidential events, um, which we do annually for the African National Congresses. Next slide, please, Seth. And when I said the change to technology, because we can say, do we use Zoom? Do we use uh, Quicket? Do we use webinars? Do we use Google? Do we use Microsoft Teams? The platform doesn't matter. But to get people to use this also is very important and the learning curve. So the first thing we did after our um, workshop is we changed the look of the PBF. So I'll put here the old and the new look. You can see the old PBF had lots of little squiggles writing. Not a bad logo, nothing wrong with it. The way we were engaging, you can see the colors. But if you see now the new PBF logo next to it, such a small difference, but completely different in the sense because it's much cleaner lines. And if you look at our engagements, what we found is we were doing a one directional talk. We were saying, oh, okay, the minister's going to brief on this new policy. Now, instead of the minister in the sense here with the employment equity bill that we recently held, just briefing on a one end ministerial briefing, we bring business experts, business associations in on the discussion and it becomes an interactive engagement and through because we did this on zoom 
people now can ask questions and we bring them on live and hopefully later today during this masterclass we'll do that too and that's actually assisted us greatly greatly in creating a better social compact and making sure that there's follow through now that is one of the big trick that that i'm very proud of but we can go to the next slide so digital transformation you can look at the slide and then you can forget it. <laughs> I'm showing it to you because this is what happens. I look at it and I go, wow, what the hell does this mean? And I think many of us say, okay, how do I make my digital transformation in, in a business happen? I know I need to now stop my accounting process being done on Excel. I need to move to an online accounting, for example. Which one do I choose? Uh, which one is the best? Let me ask my friend who works at this big corporate, how it works. What I'm saying is, yes, yeah, sure, this is a way of looking at it. And that is the, let's talk the science around it. But the best way to look at it is, what is my business process? Understand your business process, what your business is selling, who your business is, and what your people, how you're currently doing it. Then find a platform or develop a platform that can then do that message. Don't try and change, reinvent the wheel. Try and find a way, try and find a system that supports your wheel and then makes it more efficient. The next slide, please. Okay, so I, just to talk about the PBF and I'm giving everybody a little bit of heads up because we're about to launch the new PBF platform. But what we've done in this short, since March this year has been quite phenomenal and I'm extremely proud of the team. And I think many businesses know that when you're in lockdown, you're either deer in the headlights and you don't know what to do next, or you're in a situation like, let's roll up sleeves, let's find a way to make this work. And that's exactly what we did as a team. And I can proud to say that our subscri subscription base has grown, our support base has grown. We've done a couple of surveys, uh, not an Edel Edelman survey, Pumi. <laughs> we'll be talking about it. Um, but our trust barometer as such has really gone up. Uh, we've created a sense of um, a, become a knowledge source. So when people want to know about big decisions around policies of what's happening in Parliament, they come to our sites. We provide that service. Um, we've reinvented our events. So we've always been bricks and mortar when it came to our events because we felt people wanted to interact with NC leaders personally. Obviously, with COVID-19, we couldn't do that, the pandemic. We reinvented it to webinars, but webinars with a bit of spice, allowing people who are subscribers to join as in the meeting format, to engage and ask questions directly. So it's not just another webinar. It's not just another engagement. If we do do the webinar format like we're doing here today, we move people into a format where they can engage and be part of the conversation, not just hear about it. Um, big things that happened during COVID, if you've missed it, the Poppia Act has signed in, the Political Party Funding Act was signed into place. Um, this meant we had to be a lot more clear about how we were saving our data, protecting people's data. And I think this is the Poppia Act is a very important act. Tomorrow we have an event about it with uh, the minister. Um, but it's about the data doesn't belong to you. Personal data belongs to the person. And how, uh, how many of us have had a call center calling us? You're like, why on earth is company X calling me? Where did they get my phone number from? And most probably what happened is your database, you gave it, you entered a competition somewhere, and then it was sold. Now, as of, um, I think it's January next year, if I'm not mistaken, this will no longer be able to happen. No one can just call you for any such reason. Your data is protected. If anyone is using your reason, uh, your data, reselling it, it, they can be sued, they can be arrested, there's jail time around it. So great progress in that sort of sense. The other thing that affects us specifically at the PBF is the Political Party Funding Act, also an incredibly important act because it requires political parties to be more transparent, 
more accountable. They need to show who our, the donors are to make sure that whatever policies are being pushed through is not through influence of money, but through influence of change for the better of South Africa. So again, a policy that the ANC had written into its conference, which is now uh, a living act. And also the economic transformation policy. Um, policy. So um, we, the, but earlier this year, we did the ANC economic recovery plan. This has now been transformed into the South African economic plan, obviously through social compact engagement through with business, something we also assisted in facilitating. And incredibly important that that social compact happened because now you as a business understand how you can contribute to making change. Your contributions that were given in are now measured and you can actually see it in a government policy. And you can now feel it on the streets, maybe many not yet, but one great thing is, um, that's come through is payment terms, pay in 30. So Saketa um, and the SMME boards have created a campaign. I don't know if anyone's seen it launched yesterday, getting big business to promise to pay their suppliers in 30 days. And so now people are signing this and saying, we will pay small business within 30 days. If you're a small business and you get a big account, you know that if you don't get paid in 30 days, every single thing is accountable to, to yourself as making sure that you can manage your cash flow. And the big thing, our can do team. And that happened thanks to us having our workshop, but also our team that was open to change and realizing what technology and making changes could do to help ourselves, but also to help businesses out there. Next slide, please. So our approach now, you wouldn't think this would come from a political party, but transparent, measurable, accountable, and engaging. What does that mean for the PBF as our program? Well, we're about to launch a platform, which is the first. And I, I wanna say this, as far as I know, we've, we have traveled a bit around the globe, met with other political parties, but the first political program, which would be trackable with business engagement. So we're going, we're setting up a help desk, which any query through any one of our channels, be it social media, be it through an email. If you're a subscriber, obviously you get a different level of engagement. We Be it a complaint that you're having about government. We will ticket it, measure it. You today ask a question that might be related to this, which is involves an ANC leader. We will ticket it, give you the number and promise to get back to you with a solution within our capabilities. So now we can measure the outcome. Often we were doing great things, but we didn't know where it was going. We've helped businesses when we did our trade missions abroad, find business partnerships that they could leverage themselves into the next level, but we could never see that that was happening. Now to, from, from next month, we will be offering the service, which will be really first of its kind and very extremely proud that we'll be able to do that. And that again, uh, you can go to the next slide, Seth, is, Sure, for us, that might be what is important. But really what I learned from the technology journey and we went through every sort of technology we could to, to get it. In our case, we, need, we did a hybrid. We used things like Zoom, creating our own platform, other existing systems that were there. But again, technology was not the enable. Was, to, technology is just the enabler. It's not the solution. You are the solution. And I think today it's about making you the best you to think outside the box to get to where you want to be. Thank you very much, Theo. Uh, I think you're still on mute. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sasha, for telling us about the PBF and how you are using technology as the enabler and not the solution. I'm sure that our participants have learned a lot about what it is that you're doing. Right now, I'd like to hand over to Trish from Life Retreat to tell us a little bit about what she does in, in her role as the director of Life Retreat. Over to you, Trish. 
Thank you. Thank you so much, Theo. Thank you, Sasha. That was so interesting. It was really awesome. Yes, yeah, so Life Retreat focuses on wellness in the workplace. And wellness is wellness of employers and employees. And it includes mind, body, and soul. But more recently, during lockdown, we, our focus changed from wellness in the workplace to wellness of the workplace. And this is thanks to the PBF and Sasha and us having to think really out of our box. And we developed webinars for businesses in crisis. And our focus, although it was still on employees and employers' wellness, became very much on survival of business. Because we were, well, we are, many of us are still in a crisis, but we were in crisis and we needed solutions. So we brought in experts in various fields onto webinars every week. And they enabled us and many other businesses to, to think out of the box and transform our businesses. So it's been an incredible journey. We're very honored to work with the PBF and um, we still passionate about wellness of employees and employers, and I'm sure our businesses will all be on track by next year. We offer various things. We offer corporate workshops, we offer retreats, we offer corporate days, and um, small or big businesses will work with either of them. And I think it's wellness um, creates, wellness of individuals creates wellness of a business, to be honest with you. And I think it's vitally, vitally important. So back to thinking out of the box, I have a few strategies that I think are very important in thinking out of the box. These will be elaborated on in a newsletter that's gonna go out next week. But just for now, simplify your thoughts. We sometimes think too complicated. Sometimes it's better to simplify our thoughts. Ask ourselves why, why we repeat things and why we don't change them. Because thinking out of the box may change things that are vitally important in our business day. Play devil's advocate with yourself. Question yourself. Don't just carry on the way we did before. Lockdown has been an opportunity to reinvent ourselves. We don't want to go back to where we were. We were in crisis prior to this. We want South Africa to have extremely successful businesses. So play your own devil's advocate. Free write every morning. I actually sit for about 10 minutes and I just write and it's, it's awesome. And I would recommend that everybody free write. It's a really, really good thing to do. You can keep a journal or you can just write and throw it away. It doesn't matter. You don't have to read it, but just write. Take a class or do a course. Develop new skills. We have to develop ourselves. Sasha spoke about going online. It's vitally important. And um, we, Sasha and I were at the University of Zoom, it was our own university, but we put ourselves through it and we thought we had graduated, but Zoom keeps changing. So we'll keep learning. Take courses, learn new skills, create a mind map, draw a mind map. It gives you better understanding into how our minds work and how to think out of the box. Have a candid conversation with friends. What COVID's done, it's enabled us to be more honest with each other. People that were battling never confessed to it before. But we now own up and we say our businesses are battling. We need help. Do you think this would work? Just speak to friends. Friends are not judgmental anymore. There's no judgment on poor or success. People are there to help each other. So sometimes speaking to friends or family is really a good way to just get feedback on your thoughts. Ask a child's opinion. If nothing else, you'll get honesty. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's not always good. We don't always want to hear it, but just ask a child. Sleep on it. If you really, really, really have a problem, just sleep on it. Just go to sleep. Rest, take time out or sleep. But, you know, muddling our way through it is not going to find us a solution. We really need to just take time out. And finally, practice meditation. I believe that every single person should meditate or pray or have time out where they're just in silence. 
we actually have an awesome meditation CD, which I've just realized now I, should, I will put on here. And I will send a link if anyone wants to download it for free. It's on a mindfulness meditation CD and you're welcome to download it. But really, um, meditations are complicated. Meditation is silence. It's just peace and quiet and silence. And I think if we put all these strategies into place, it will enable us to think out of the box. It will enable us to survive. And I do believe that South Africa is on a much more level playing field now and we have wonderful opportunities. So I think we should grab them. And I'm very delighted that we have some awesome experts on board today and I'm so excited to listen to them. And with that, I'm gonna hand back to Theo. Super, thank you very much, Trish, for telling us a bit more about what you're doing at Life Retreat and for giving us those, those 10 tips on uh, how we need to maybe shift our thinking a little bit. Uh, we are talking about, about thinking outside of the box. So I'm sure that a lot of our participants would have found that information quite valuable. I think what I'd like to do now is to just check in with, with our participants who've joined us. And if you would like to just indicate in the chat box who you are, the, perhaps the name of your business, where you're from, and when you do so, just make sure that you indicate to, to all panelists and attendees. That way we can all see what you've written in the chat box. So that we can just get a sense of, of who is in fact with us this afternoon before we move over and get the, our, our guest speakers lined up to, um, to, to give us the value that they've prepared for us in their presentations this afternoon. So just take a few minutes and also if there's anybody that would like to raise any questions or make any comments based upon um, what you've heard thus far, then please feel free to do so in the chat box as well. And, um, and then we, we can then after that, then introduce our guest speakers. So so again, just I... make sure that, that you yeah. change to, ah, here we go. Yeah. We've got Renisha from the Western Cape and her business is buzzmaker.net as www.easycapture.co.za. Thank you very much, Renisha. Sorry, Sasha, I, I thought you wanted to- No, I to... was saying, I think it might take some people a little while so we could okay. maybe um, carry on with the program and you can just slot it in. All right, sure. no problem. All right, so without any further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our guest speakers for this afternoon. I did introduce them very briefly at the beginning of the webinar, but uh, now we can just give a little bit more information about our guest speakers and uh, just get you ready and primed for the valuable information that they will be sharing with us this afternoon. I just wanted to make sure, uh, Seth, do we have Grace back online? Uh, not as yet, Theo, so we can move not on to Mpumi. All right. All right, so we are having some technical issues with one of the off speakers, but we will start then with our guest speaker, Mpumelelo Zondi. He is the business unit director based in Johannesburg and serves as brand practice lead for Edelman Africa. With 16 years of experience in advertising and marketing, Mpumi brings a wealth of advertising, strategic and creative experience to business. So without any further ado, Mpumi, over to you. Thank you, Theo, and thank you for that uh... Lovely intro. I hope I live up to it. <laughs> um, so yeah, guys, uh, thank you very much for the invite. I really um, want to kind of intro myself, uh, intro the business that I represent, and, and, and hopefully take you um, just a little deeper in terms of uh, uh, what I'm responsible for. And, and to a large extent, you know, the lessons 
that we've learned during COVID and, 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 and also the, the different strategies that we've tried to apply, uh, uh, I guess, to navigate uh, the COVID challenge. Um, so yeah, so I think Seth, if you can um, put up the PowerPoint. Cool, thank you very much. Um, so yeah, so what I really wanna do is go, so yes, my name is Pumele Lozondi. Pumi, I am the business director at, at Edelman Africa. I'm really responsible for, for what is called the brand practice, which I'll talk to you about uh, in a lot more depth. But really what I wanted to do is really start from the top in terms of introducing um, who, Edelman, who Edelman is, because fascinatingly, uh, no one really know, knows who we are, but it's, it's, it's changing. Um, so if you can go to the next slide. Uh, really at a very high level, um, uh, Edelman is the number one communication firm in the world, which is, again, sounds like a boast, but, you know, sometimes, you know, Muhammad Ali said it's not boasting if it's true, so I'm going to own that one, right? And um, really, for, 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 from our point of view, we're number one in the world, we have 6,000 employees, we have, you know, over 100 languages that's, that are spoken within the different uh, offices, we have 65 offices around the world. Uh, in, in, in 35 countries. So, so, so we are not small from that point of view. Um, we are led uh, by a man called Richard Edelman. It's a family owned business. It's headed out, it's headed up outside of um, New York. Uh, the business was started by his father. Um, and I absolutely believe this is hands down, uh, probably one of the best uh, companies to work for, uh, in my view, uh, if my boss is watching. <laughs> um, so, so that's us from, I think, from a global point of view. And I guess that's easy, you know, we big, yeah, yes, and yes, and yes. But I think for me, the, the really compelling and interesting story then comes into um, really what Edelman Africa has gone through potentially in the last four, four years, three years, two years. And, 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 and to, my, to, to my view, the kind of explosive growth that we've, that we've experienced. So if you go to the next slide, we then go deeper into Edelman Africa, right? Uh, and again, so Edelman Africa, um, was potentially about three years ago, three, four years ago, a kind of really small office. If you understand that there's, you know, there's 65 in 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 in, in the world, it's a really small, obscure office. And 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 the reality of it is 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 that we only really had one office on a continent, which is which is kind of crazy if you think about it. But again, a fascinating um, opportunity. Um, but today we are the fastest growing office in the group. Literally, we are rock starring it. Um, we have been uh, named uh, African um, Consultancy of the Year. Um, we have literally, in, 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 in potentially the last two years, uh, we now have a, we have a South Africa office. Uh, we've opened the Kenya office. Uh, 2021, we're looking at opening a Nigeria office as well. So again, some pretty uh, kind of awesome expansion within uh, uh, the, 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 African, the, the African market. Um, and I think for me, the, the really great thing there um, is that, I mean, I think we've gone for something like 25 million in terms of revenue, and it, uh, but three years ago, we are now sitting at 100, which again is just an insane amount of growth, which really led um, Edelman to, to uh, Richard Edelman to say this, which is the next slide. Um, uh, what we've done in South Africa is a miracle, um, and this is what is possible. So it's a really great, point of pride, I think, for us and the team in terms of the example that we are setting um, on a global stage. And, and really, I'm, then I'm going to go into deeper into the company itself so you get a little bit more detail. But really, what are the two things that we are known for? Right? Next slide. The one thing we're known for, it was called the Edelman Trust Barometer. I'm going to go into a little bit more detail into that one, but it's a really stunning uh, piece of research. And I guess the other really fun thing is that we were responsible for the KFC proposal which went viral last year. And that PR campaign generated over a billion rand with a free PR for KFC, which is insane and nearly unheard of. So it's, it's, it's again, quite a fascinating case study. And we can go into detail on that one, but we don't have the time, right? Um, and then now I want to take you into the company itself. So next slide. So as a company, we are divided into four practices. On the far right, that is my practice. I've colored it in blue, also just because I want to show off how big it is. Um, <laughs> um, so that so that is that is a brand practice. The next practice um, is called tech, which is really PR around specializing in in, in tech businesses. Um, the next one is reputation, which is kind of pure classic PR, 
And the fourth one is called advisory, which is again, another fascinating business um, that, that, that I wanna touch on again in, in terms of how we've grown. Um, and that's really it. But for me, again, the thing to, to kind of really recognize um, is that my, my division two and a half years ago was seven people. We're now 30 people. Um, we are now contributing 40% of, 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 of the office's revenue. So it's been, again, incredible, um, explosive uh, growth. We've gone from one client two and a half years ago to 10 clients. And those clients themselves probably represent probably near 25 to 30 different brands that we are responsible for. So again, um, really exciting stuff. Um, our biggest client is, is Unilever. And, and no, we were not responsible for the Tresemme drama. That was not us. Um, um, so again, really, again, uh, a great point of pride for us. Um, and as again, as I've said, uh, we, 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 we were responsible for the KFC case studies. So we know what Illman is from a global point of view. We know the impact, is the, the, main, the changes we've, we've had from an Africa point of view and from a divisional point of view, um, my little piece of business um, is now the largest um, uh, in, in, in our community. In our community. Um, really kind of followed by the advisory business, which I then want to touch on. So, so really what I wanted to do um, is Trish said, uh, shared 10 points. I want to share three lessons. Um, um, and if you go into the next slide, and these, and, and these, and, and these are the, the lessons. So for me, I think one of the most interesting things when we look at you know, the challenge of COVID um, is really the things we did to try and navigate. And again, I mean, we're a communication firm, we're an agency, so we did lose clients. So it, it's not that we were completely um, absolved from the challenges. But I think for me, one of the inspirational things about the work we did was, was how we pivoted, pivot um, to, 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 to kind of survive. So I think for me, the first lesson is really what I call double down. I have an American boss, so sometimes I use American technology, a terminology. Um, but really for me, doubling down was really around you know, as a business starting to have a think about what is the one thing that we are known for and what is the one thing that we, we are good at and what is the one thing that we can currently double down to actually help navigate us through, the, through this challenge. I think the most interesting thing and the most natural thing that most businesses would do is that you want to hedge your bets, right? So what you want to do is you actually want to spread the risk. And as a result, what happens sometimes is that you, you, you give away a whole lot of energy to try to do too many things instead of focusing on one. So for us, our main focus and the one thing that we did have is, is what I spoke to you guys about earlier, uh, the trust, the element trust barometer. We've been studying trust for 20 years. And, and, and within studying trust, we've looked at kind of really four areas of our society. We've looked at business, we've looked at government, uh, we've looked at NGOs, and we've looked at media, right? And every year we publish the report, it's free. So you can actually go Google Edelman uh, Trust Barometer and you can actually download the report. It's free and you can look at the last 20 years. Um, there's a lot of fascinating insights there. And, and I think, and, as, and then as a, as a client, um, what you then gain is you get the free report from a, from a global point of view, but as a client, you actually gain the local report. We've got a South Africa one now, a Kenya one now, and a Nigeria one now. And it's interesting in terms of, I just want to highlight quickly um, things within the report. I think... Um, so out of the four divisions, for example, for 2019, we, we found out that out of all of this kind of chaos that we've kind of been going through for the last, potentially the last, let's say five years or probably longer, um, business is now at the top in terms of the most trusted entity. And unfortunately, government right now is struggling and sitting at the bottom, right? And, and really for us, what, what we, we've been utilizing the insights to do is to then consult with our clients in terms of trying to get them to rebuild trust and, and specifically their reputation. And, and so you can imagine that during COVID when everything is uncertain, trust becomes quite an important thing to have as a, as a business, right? So that kind of division and that kind of focus for us in terms of doubling down on that one discipline um, really has helped us in terms of one, generating new revenues, uh, but really starting to generate enough um, that we are able to, 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 to really kind of ride this COVID, uh, this COVID challenge. And, and for me, what is then the lesson from an entrepreneurial point of view, right? Entrepreneurial point of view for me, the lesson is sometimes the, the, the riskiest thing you can do is try to play it safe, right? Focusing on one thing and giving it everything you've got is it gives you the potential to actually turn things around. I think a very popular case study from an, a South African point of view, African point of view is, is a bio, bio oil story where they had, I think, over 100 brands 
and and they were kind of surviving but not but, but not really and when they actually chose to to close down all the brands and just focus on bio oil uh, that is now the largest um uh oil and, and, and scar a uh, 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 product on the, on the planet, right? So, so again, it's a highly risky move, but focus, and again, um, as Trish said earlier, simplify thinking. Um, it's really around collapsing all your energy and given one thing, uh, everything, really. Um, so from that point of view, for me, uh, lesson one is double down, right? The second lesson, which is for me, my, my favorite and potentially my, my, my greatest piece of pride in terms of what we've done is, you know, last year we, we were having chats with, the, with our MIA region offices, our London office, and they were, you know, they were talking to us about, you know, the internal investments, uh, where are we spending our money? Um, and one of the things that really came out was the fact that they were spending quite a lot of money, a couple of hundred thousand pounds um, on, on freelancers and creatives uh, in the UK. Um, for me and my boss, there was an interesting business opportunity, which we hadn't really thought of before, which was, I have a creative discipline within my studio, you know, within my business. And one of the things we then had a look at was to say, hey guys, if you're spending all that, that money externally, what if you actually shifted it into another Edelman office? Because we have the skill sets um, in, in, in Africa. Now, that was a little uncomfortable for them because, you know, it's Africa, right? Um, so, so we had to do a little bit of con convincing. But again, you know, one of the things for me I went out to and said is, listen, just give us the projects you don't want for now. Let's start there, right? We picked up a few projects and we knocked them out the park. You know, they were surprised by the quality of the work. They were surprised by the, by the speed at which we were able to do things. And that started opening up a very kind of interesting dynamic. Um, and to a very large extent, a very different business unit that we had never thought of. And here's the thing, you know, they say luck is, 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 is when preparedness meets opportunity. Um, when COVID hit, what then happened is we had to do hiring freezes and therefore we could not hire uh, a third party or, 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 or freelancers in that space. So, and that was me sitting there with an opportunity, which was I had the skill sets locally. And here's the key, right? You are moving money from one, one office to another. So we are not losing it to the outside world. And the second and the best part is you have pounds and we are rent-based business. So what you can do with your pounds here goes, a very, goes very, very far. Um, so now where we stand is we've done projects for five offices, London, Germany, Belgium, uh, the Netherlands, and now we're actually starting to look at New York as well. Um, and for me, the, the really interesting part, which is to a very extent my passion, is, is, is really starting to present to the world the kind of, the, the kind of talent that we have on this continent, uh, the very young creative talent that we have on this continent, and, and really starting to showcase that we can um, uh, bet with the, with, with the best of them. Um, so again there, I think for me then the question then becomes, you know, what's the lesson, right? Um, I think for me, there's a number of things. One, in, you know, as an entrepreneur, are, are, are you looking at your business, like, like, like Sasha would say, and, and, and keeping up to date with what is happening? My question to you is, are you speaking to the right client, right? I had a, I had a client uh, 10 years ago, it's insurance business. And at that time, 50% of the clients were 50 plus, right? Now, if you're running a business where half your, your, your clients are at 50 plus, you need to find young people to, to sustain yourself, right? So how, how are you looking um, at, 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 at your audience and how relevant is it from, not from just where you are now, but where you are going in the future. There's another one which I, I found very interesting, which was, I think, looking at uh, the Hilux Toyota. And that for a very, very long time, um, Toyota, the Hilux was actually really bought by, by African men and, and usually farmers, right? Makes sense. And, and if I say that, you know, it makes a whole lot of sense. But over time, without really noticing, uh, more black women started buying uh, Hiluxes, right? From a, you know, from a farming point of view, they were studying industrial businesses and all those kind of things. And for a long time, Toyota had no clue. They were selling to the wrong audience, right? Question is, how are you looking at your audience and evolving with it to stay relevant? That's lesson two, right? And the last lesson I call publish or perish. By that, I mean, now we are a communication firm, we are a PR firm, and, and really our strategic partners within what we do um, is the media industry, journalism, right? And the challenges that this country is facing in terms of journalism, in terms of, you know, there's, there's magazines shutting down, there's publications shutting down. Um, there's an evolution of journalists moving out of the discipline and the journalists that we have now becoming younger and less experienced, right? So we have to have a look 
at how are we how, how are we evolving and surviving our business to stay relevant, right? Um, and for me, um, one of the most interesting things that is a huge lesson is is that no matter no matter what business you're in, service or product, you are a publisher if you want to survive in the future, right? You look at Red Bull. Red Bull is probably one of the biggest media houses around. They just so happen to sell energy juice, energy drink. But actually what people come to them for on a daily basis from a content point of view is actually their videos or music videos, the extreme sports and all those kind of things. It's an actually an entertainment brand that just so happens to sell an energy drink, right? Um, Simon Sinek, um, and I'm sure a lot of you guys have probably read him, uh, he, he's got a fascinating line, which I love, which he says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it, right? And again, what is the lesson? Um, as a business, what is your business about the product or service that you're selling, or is it about the why of what you're doing? Um, there was a guy who was trying to make this, 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 uh, this example where he looked at uh, two bottles of wine, right? And he read the back. And the one wine, which was a good wine, talked about you know, the nose. It talked about the grape. It talked about you know, the winery, you know, the classic stories. The second bottle he looked at was a bottle that was uh, the, the, a winery that was owned by two brothers who had lost their mother to cancer. And they have started this business as a passion, but as a way to also honor their mother. And 10% of the, of, the, of, of the income went into supporting um, uh, a cancer research. Now, as a consumer, I'm sitting there, right? And I've got one story. One is the classic product, this is what we do. The other one is an interesting story about two brothers trying to, trying to honor their mother, right? Now, again, there's a market for both. But for me, if you really think about it, Imagine the kind of content you can create telling the story of these two brothers and, and, and in turn um, selling the wine product. So those for me are the three lessons that I wanted to share. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible because uh, we do need to keep things simple nowadays. And just to reiterate is double down. Um, the, 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 the worst thing you could do now, the biggest risk that you can do now in business is to play it safe. Uh, the second one is look for unlikely clients. Right? You might think that you, you, your business is struggling locally when actually you might find that there's a whole bunch of Russian guys who would love your brand, but you don't know. Um, and the third point is uh, publish or perish. Um, and that is me. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Mpumi, for that very, very fascinating look into what you do at Edelman Africa and for the, the, those three very, very great lessons, I think that, that, uh, that you've learned uh, in your company as far as how you have approached the thinking out of the box uh, mm. idea. So mm. thank you very much for that. If anybody thank you. of our participants that has any questions or any comments that you'd like to raise, just you can hold on to those. We will be providing an opportunity after we've had both of our speakers giving their presentations for you to then raise your questions and comments on the presentations. So without any further ado, we now introduce our second speaker, who is Grace Wumo. And Grace is the three-time CEO Global Pan-African Awards winner for 2018 and 2019 in the SADC Regional Business and Professional Services category. And in 2017, she was a winner in the SA, Country, SME, and Government category. Grace is also the founder and CEO of Luxury Exclusive. She's the founder and CEO of Flexi Digital. And she's the founder and CEO of Luxury Media Africa. So with all of that, Grace, over to you. Um, thank you very much, Theo, for the introduction. Um, earlier on, in fact, I realized that I was sitting in the webinar listening to everyone presenting. And uh, as soon as you mentioned uh, my name, I realized that um, I realized that I immediately needed to shift my uh, my just hold on. I needed to shift my. Uh, where I was sitting to 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 get back to to the panelist uh, chat. Um, 
And that immediately brought me to the awareness that in the ability of uh, technology, uh, you don't panic, but you rather find uh, the opportunity in the chaos to be able to adapt as quickly as possible. And uh, it gives me great pleasure to say thank you for this exciting opportunity. And I believe that I am probably a very good example of thinking out of the box uh, when it comes to this kind of uh, discussion. Uh, and that takes me back to having to think where I have come from, my background, from a business perspective, and to where I am currently sitting. And when Trish uh, spoke to me about this, I immediately said, oh, what an opportunity. And I felt really honored to be here and to be part of the group. So uh, just to let you know, uh, to give you just a slight background of what Luxury Exclusives is all about. We are a digital platform, uh, recently founded about three years ago. And uh, really that was founded out of my uh, many travels into Africa. I come from a very strong technology uh, background, which is uh, um, I've been deploying financial solutions for, uh, for banks across Africa, really to enable them to do uh, value added services, uh, things like your mobile banking, as well as just being able to, to create inclusive uh, banking services for clients. And having traveled to 32 countries in Africa, I realized how beautiful our own continent is. And I decided that, you know what, there is so much of untold stories of our own continent and something has got to give in. And I decided that as much as I have, was having a very glamorous um, uh, um, uh, a position traveling across Africa, being responsible for markets like West Africa, I decided, no, there is something untold about Africa and it's about time we change the narrative for Africa. When I look at CNN, when I look at all these big platforms, all they talk about is the chaos, the wars, the corruption. And I felt something is not right here. So I went ahead and I formed, I formed uh, Luxury Exclusives. We started as Luxury Media Africa, which is now, uh, we are shifting focus. And we've created a digital platform. That digital platform really does three key things. It's a marketing and advertising platform for one. Then. We do also promote uh, brands on the platform that are focused, uh, that are Africa focused. Uh, that is manufacturers, brands that are really focused on I and G luxury. And Unfortunately, it looks like we've we've lost Grace. We have some technical issues. I wonder if uh, if Seth can perhaps try to get Grace back online for us. In the meantime, while we're trying to sort out the technical issues, is there anybody in our participants this afternoon who would like to raise some questions for? Mpumalelo. Yes, please. No pressure. <laughs> I'll actually go first. First, yeah. Mpumi, I've got a question yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, I was very interested. I think you, the one thing that you mentioned is the, and I think it's 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 an absolutely, it, it, it's a fundamental. Are we back? Yep. Is Grace back with us? Not yet. It's it's a it's an absolutely fundamental idea, I think, for for particularly for business owners and entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And that is, what you said was that the riskiest thing to do is to play it safe. Mm -hmm. And I think in the COVID environment, nothing has become, for me at least, from my observations, has been more pronounced than a lot of business owners that have basically retracted into their shells yep. and been even more fearful than they would perhaps would have been normally. Yeah, to sure. take decisive action mm. and and take the risks that, that mm. they perhaps needed to take in order to, to keep the business afloat. And I mean, the sad part of it is that perhaps many of the businesses that ended up falling by the wayside could perhaps have gone that route because business yep. owners were too afraid 
to take the risk that could perhaps have saved the business. Yeah, sure. So what is your advice for, for our business owners and entrepreneurs on how they can overcome this fear of, of risk to yep. take action, especially within the, the very risky COVID environment that we now find yep. ourselves? Um, look, I think <laughs> here's a comforting thought for me, <laughs> and I think about this very differently, is I think right now, and especially if you look at potentially even the last 10 years or so, I, I think we're living in, in, in such a disrupted environment, right? That, 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 that I think that we're in a space where actually no one knows what, we, what we're doing. And that's really the truth. People might, might pretend that they do, but, but they don't. And I think for me, um, how do you get over that is number one, you, you know, you, one, you're not the only one, right? Two, it's not like you know something that no one else knows. Um, and, then, and, and, and then really three is starting to, and this for me is a big key with my team, is I'm more obsessed about learning than winning, right? Because I feel like what's gonna help us survive going forward, it's not gonna be constantly being the best. It's gonna be constantly being the person who learns faster than anyone else. That's the game, right? And for me, when, when that is my focus, then my ego is checked because I'm not worried about whether I win or lose or whether I'm number one, any of those. I'm really worried about what this environment what this experience is teaching me and how quickly I can apply that lesson to continue going forward. So, so for me, I would say that my advice to you would be, yes, I know you're an entrepreneur and yes, I know that you're supposed to keep the business going. And yes, I know that it's tough, but shift the focus, right? The focus is about being a learner who can learn things quickly about the marketplace and adapt it to your business. If you do that right, the money would take care of itself. And at least that's, you know, that's kind of what I think what I think. That's my two cents. Super. Thank you very much, Mpumi. All right. We, we have Grace back online. So let's hand over to Grace to continue with the presentation. Thank you very much, Grace. Um, so back to what I was just talking about with regards to our platform. So we first of the kind of a kind of the platform, we are 100% women owned. Uh, proudly African and really, really um, 2020 has really been an amazing year for us. Being as young as we are, we have been able to be awarded um, two very strategic uh, um, awards for the business. One, which is the best luxury platform in Africa and Middle East, as well as the best Africa um, luxury uh, platform, a uh, digital platform in South Africa by two international um, award entities. So um, with regard to just thinking out of the box, and I was really juggling with thoughts uh, with regards to what I would like to present, was, um, was to really share um, the key lessons that I'm finding from COVID. And just to prepare, and in line with what, uh, what Trish said earlier was, um, it's, it's, it's really realizing that we are living in very uncertain times. And as a business, you can't just continue to operate in your own normal way. We've got to adjust, we've got to have a mind shift and we've got to create, to, to really wear multiple different arts. And I was saying, if you look at what's happening, there's so many webinars that are currently taking place with so much information. So you can easily find yourself juggling from one place to the other, not really knowing where you really need to get your best information from. So the seven key mind shift strategies that I thought would really be good to share with everybody and that have worked for me were including the first one being just starting your day with, with a routine, you know, get into a silence mode and connect with your inner self, you know, just stop and listen for once. You know, the day, in a day, there's only 12 hours or 24 hours if you consider the night as well. And you can only do so much. So identify what is a priority for yourself, for your business, and run with that for the day. I know that we are, we are right now, COVID brought so many changes. We are trying to pick up this ball, drop this ball. And really, the curve balls that are sitting right in our hands are so many to a point that you don't even know where to, how to really juggle them. So remain focused, regardless of what the, the future holds. Know that the, the challenges are there, you know, COVID is real. 
but so is your business. You're not going to drop the business because of COVID. You've got to identify where the priorities are while you're maintaining the, the, the uh, while you're maintaining uh, the presence and while you're being relevant to your own business. Uh, the second one that I felt is, uh, is more meaningful and that has worked for me is discovering really networks and collaboration that work. You know, I've, every day I get invited to so many of the webinars, so many events to attend. Yet I'm finding that I am not in a position to attend to each one of these. So my take is I just need to discover which of these networks really work for me, what value they bring to my business and just aligning myself with that, that is relevant for me and works for my business. We are still in infant stages and with that we are learning a lot. So the whole thing of learning and learning and relearning is really becoming relevant in everything that we are doing right now. The third point is really being able to step out of your comfort zone. And there's always a very good saying that I say, uh, that says, if you wanna soar like an eagle, you have to break out of your comfort zone. You cannot continue to do the things the way you did them. And Trish put it so well when she said that you cannot be comfortable just being doing things the way you did them. You've got to change your ways. You've got to taste your comfort zones and say, I have been comfortable. I've been doing this thing the same way over and over. It's about time. If I'm getting the same results, clearly I'm not doing this. I'm not doing things right. So you've got to change how you do things and step out of that comfort zone. Don't be comfortable in your position. If you are still getting the same results, then you're not doing this. You are not doing um, everything, what you should be doing. The fourth is uh, back to what uh, Tris is saying is that ask questions like a kid, you know, uh, being that inquisitive kid, you know, asking questions. Nobody will accuse you for asking any questions. Indulge that curiosity. Don't be afraid to ask any questions. You know, even the most obvious ones, you know, you may look like, did she just say that? But ask it. It will trigger thoughts to the person that you are asking the questions to. So don't be afraid to really, really dive into the asking of the questions and understanding why should we do these things the way we are doing them. And I do get that quite often from my end. Um, the fifth one is do not be afraid to ask the what if questions, you know. Uh, in the midst of asking the questions, we and add solutions and find alternatives. Uh, Dio put it so well when he said, um, we find solutions and opportunities in the chaos. So do not be afraid, you know, let your, let your, let your, let your asking of the questions be the one thing that drives you to find the right answers. If it doesn't sit well with you, be that first person that lifts up their arm and asks, why so? Why should we go this way? Why not this way? Gauge the different aspects, gauge the different solutions that, that are out there. Don't just be that person that says, yes, try and try and look at the different ways of doing the things that you've always done them. And in the midst of all that, you will definitely find the one thing that can really work for you. The sixth strategy for me is just being able to identify myself and surround myself with um, with the thinkers that are, that are really also thinking out of the box and just surrounding myself with people that are relevant to, to what I want to do. You know, identifying myself with the people that I feel connect with my inner core, with my business and being relevant, sharing ideas, connecting with them. It's amazing how you find that the one thing that you thought was so relevant to your business is also very relevant to somebody else, but they didn't have somebody to share it with. And the moment you share the ideas, it's amazing the power of just being able to connect with the right people and just being able to extract that information. You know, it will help you just even have an inner reflection and self-reflection that helps you unlock your total thinking. And there is a saying that says, show me your friends and I'll show you who you are. You know, that is the kind of model that I'm talking about. So if you continue to surround with yourself with people that have no purpose, no vision, I promise you, you will find yourself just being so comfortable and not being able to even think beyond just that purpose. And the seven uh, strategy is just, you can either decide to conquer your fear or 
forget everything and run or face everything and drive, you know? And that I don't need to expand on it further because it really just speaks on courage and just being able to rise above your fears. Um, another thing that is really working uh, from a business perspective is just making the best of, of the internet, you know? There are so many advantages of so many tools that we can take advantage of, you know, from social media to communication and information access to seamless e-commerce platforms, uh, analytical tools that we can look into to drive business success and awareness. So take advantage of that. Don't just be comfortable. Don't say you don't know. There's so many webinars. The internet right now has got so many tutorials and so many uh, YouTube uh, lessons that we can all learn from. So take advantage of each one of them. And you will find that even if you didn't know something, you will actually realize that the information that you are tapping into is so much greater than just sitting and just saying that, I don't know how I can do it. The other thing that I thought about is what can governments really do to amplify and stimulate economic growth for SMEs? Because I felt that this being a forum that is about progressive businesses, it is important that we talk about what government can also do to help strengthen or stimulate business growth through SMEs. Um, we've been sitting with awareness a drive, a mental awareness drive, and it's become a huge um, drive where we realize, especially being faced with COVID, mental health is real, you know? You will be sitting with people, you don't realize how deep people have been affected by COVID. And it's important that even from a business perspective, even this webinar, we start driving awareness on mental health and start connecting at a point where people are making money. At the same time, people are losing a lot of money. Businesses have shut. Businesses which were making a lot of money, they've closed down because they have no idea where to go and get help from. And mentally, people are shrinking. People are losing friends. And you are realizing that people are choosing to close themselves and not engage anymore. You know, the fact it was, it was encouraging to hear Sasha speak that um, uh, the ANC and the Progressive Business Forum is encouraging local buy and the partnership between at the Progressive Business and the, um, the South African, um, proudly South African. That is very encouraging because we do need to encourage local buy. That is the only way to stimulate growth and drive it right to the grassroots. You know, the timeless payment of SMEs and providers is key. If the SMEs are not getting paid in time, the government is only killing those same businesses that are trying to grow. You know, creating tax reliefs and incentives to local manufacturers is key because it will help them not only boost what they're able to do, but help them to also grow and be able to even produce more. You know, just ensuring we have the proper legislations that protect the local products and unfair competition, uh, and unfair competition is key. You know, that is a responsibility for the government to ensure local people, local manufacturers are very well protected. And lastly, is also to ensure the private sector itself is aligned with government and agenda uh, is also a very key thing because we can't say we are not we are not looking at what the government is doing. We are also reliant on what the government is issuing as an agenda. And as a government, as a private entity, following on that and aligning ourselves to ensure that we can grow from a business perspective. Um, and lastly is what are some of the challenges as SMEs that we find ourselves in? Of course, if you're small, you're small. Your financial muscle is not as big as, uh, as a big organization. So you're constrained, you know? So you've got to find ways of really pulling in partners into your business that can help you with that financial muscle to help you grow. It may not be immediate, it may take time, but just have the confidence to identify who are the right people you'd like to approach and start connecting with those people. Out of those, you will find the business interest and they will come to connect with you. Gender stigmatization is real. I'm, for instance, in an industry that is highly male dominated and I find myself facing this all the time. But guess what? I am not giving up and I am not letting that allow me to slow down or allow me to not achieve what I want to achieve, you know? 
the late payment, not only from government, but also from other clients, is a serious impact on cash flow for any small business. So we need to ensure that we are having those constant engagement and communications with our clients to ensure that there's timeless payments that are coming through back to the business. Um, again, clients are looking for proven concepts. You've got to give a lot of free um, stuff out there in order to win back. If you look at the way Facebook, the way Alibaba started, they started with, with giving platforms for free so that they can get the, 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 the clients to have the proven concepts. So don't be afraid to give your platforms or to give your services for free so that you can have clients that can testify and that can talk about your products in return and get feedback from those clients to ensure that you are constantly checking your performance. You know? And lastly is just uh, the other two uh, elements that align with what I spoke about from a government perspective. But I feel that when we have this challenge from an SME address, we will really be able to step up and, um, and, and remain focused. And that's it from me. Uh, would love to connect with you. Those are my details. If you have any questions, certainly I'd love to take them. Thank you. Thanks back to you, Peter. Super, thank you very much, Grace, for another great presentation. Always awesome as a business coach to hear a business owner, a successful business owner and entrepreneurs talking about the importance of the inner work, the inner game, as we call it in the coaching world. Because a lot of the times as business owners, we tend to focus a lot more on the external. And especially when things are not going too well in the business, as many I'm sure of our business owners that are with us today have experienced in their businesses. And we tend to become so fixated, so focused on the external stuff that we end up neglecting the internal stuff, the inner work. And I'm always reminded now as I'm listening to you, Grace, I'm reminded of the, of the idea that there is no business without you. So if, if you are not in the right mindset, if you are not in the right mental space, then your business will not be in the right space either. So it is vitally important that we need to also focus on the inner work and make sure that our mindset shifts are of such a nature that they actually lead us in the right direction in order to help us to lead our businesses in the right direction. So thank you very much for, for that, Grace. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm opening it up now for questions and comments for our speakers or for anyone of us on the panel. So please feel free to raise your questions or comments in the chat box and we will go through them and then allow our speakers to respond to those questions or comments. Hey, it looks like everyone's questions have been answered today by our experts. We normally get loads of questions. But uh, both of your presentations have been amazing. I have just learned so much. So I'm sure people are also just absorbing all the information that they've just received. Thank you very much. Are there any more questions? Right. Mm. Yes, please. Yeah. I think one of the things... Appear, so. Mm -hmm. if, if I yes. could just jump in and just uh, just add on to what Trish just said is that um, as, as, as you walk into the business journey and as mm -hmm. most of us are getting into the, into the business world and becoming the entrepreneurs is that you just need to realize that you're not alone. There are forums mm -hmm. such as the Progressive Business Forum that has been created to really create um, networks and help mm -hmm. businesses find solutions within the networks that are out there. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to highlight that in as much as we are young and we are growing, the platforms mm -hmm. are there and we just need to surround ourselves with the right um, forums in order to know where we can find the right growth that we're looking for. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think from my side, probably the last thought, just to kind of, kind of echo what Grace, Grace has just said is, is um, I'm a huge believer in, in, in reading, right? And, and again, it's potentially what, what, what I pride myself in, in terms of um, we live in the information age, right? And, and, and for me, you know, uh, in, the, in, 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 
in, in an environment of information, you know, then ignorance becomes a choice because there's a lot of information available. And, um, you know, I always joke with my team to say that my car actually is a classroom because Monday to Friday, I'm listening to audiobooks in my car, right? The music is only for the weekends because there's just so much to learn and so much information to kind of take in. Um, you know, I try to go through at least three books a month um, because uh, uh, you are literally learning from, from, from potentially some of the top thinkers in the world. Uh, write it in the palm of your hand or write in your, in, in your audiobook. So, so the obsession with, with constantly learning, constantly evolving, um, I think is a very, very important one. Yeah, those are, those are great points, Bumi. Thanks for that. Mm. Yeah, um, I just want to say something um, from Grace and Pumi's perspective. What's so amazing to me is these are people doing it. You know, these aren't mm. people talking about how to do it. They're living it. They're making a business work. They're building. And they're here today willing to share with us and to teach us. And I think, you know, we have businesses here joining us today. They are maybe trying to be successful businesses or they're already successful in one specific field. But what we can learn is that don't just stop with that. Always pay it forward, help mm -hmm. others. Because if it wasn't for within business, I do come from a business background. I have quite a bit of corporate experience. Someone helping me, mentoring me, business coaching me, I would not have been able to get where I am. And sure, I've had to learn the hard way, fumble and fall and make the mistakes. Sometimes you do have to make the mistakes, but I've also avoided major mistakes by learning from others. And so in your own business, make sure that within your own business units and your businesses that you run, that you're also teaching the, your team, that they don't make the mistakes that you've made before. And through that level of communication, um, it will really help in the growth that you don't have to be going, no, 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 mister, you shouldn't have been doing this, that others don't have to make the mistakes you did. And with that, I also want to add, if there are lessons with attendees here today who would like to share with us at PBF, you would like us to share through the network, you would like us to offer you a platform to communicate, you have a story you want to tell, please send it to us. We would love to amplify your story. We'd love to engage it. We'd love to work with it. Email me personally. It's sasha at pbf.org.za. I will work with you on it. We'd love to see you on the platform. Okay, back to you, Theo. Super. Thank you very much for that, Sasha. Thank you very much. Well, it doesn't look like there are any questions or comments in the chat box. So taking, I will take my lead from my co-hosts in terms of whether we bring the webinar to an end now or I think so. I think we can wrap it up. I think Super. everyone's questions seem to be answered. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody, for coming on our experts. It was incredible. And Theo, it's always an honor to work with you, and you so inspiring. Thank you so much. And thank finally, you. to the PBF for hosting us so generously. Um, mm. So if anyone else has anything they'd like to say in closing, please feel welcome. And I would just like to thank you personally. Yeah, super. No, I mean, for me, thank you for the opportunity. Um, really enjoyed that. Um, yeah, and you know, sharing is caring. So I really love this. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you very thanks, much, thanks, thanks for me. And if you want to watch it again, you can go to our YouTube site or go yeah. to our PBF Facebook, and we'll be sending everybody the videos as well that you can access for referencing and forwarding to others. Thank Great. you, everybody. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.